If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. We were waiting for our flight to take off to New Zealand when we came across a man with a cane. His name was Bobby. He was a 76-year-old Korean war vet. We just approached him and asked if we could pray for him. And so we pray for him once, nothing happens. We pray again, nothing happens. And then we just start talking. And then he's the one going, hey, you know, it is strange while I'm talking to you guys, I'm feeling goosebumps in my arms. And, and then he said, well, what's this warmth I'm feeling in my knees and in my back? If I have goosebumps tomorrow, <laughs> then I'm going to be real nervous. I want you to know it's because we asked Jesus for it. Okay. And you, when, you get, when, when that happens, you go, you know what? I remember what those crazy yeah. guys were saying. Yeah. Yeah. And I know where that came crazy. from. So. I just got a little nervous when you approach me. I say, wait a minute. A bunch of ragtag looking guys. <laughs> <laughs> Many times when we would pray for someone, that person who had just received prayer would then go around and lay their hands on someone else. It was so encouraging to watch that happen time and time again, because that's the kingdom. The kingdom is about us being participants of the gospel. One of the questions we asked Bobby was whether or not a Christian had ever stopped and offered to pray for him. And he said, in 76 years, not once. That hit me so hard. It was like the Lord was speaking through Bobby to me and just reminding me, this is what I've called you to do. It's my heart expressed in the simplest form to people that desperately need to know that Jesus loves them. That stuck with us throughout the whole trip. None of us really knew what to expect going into New Zealand, but we all had this feeling that God was with us and that his kindness was going to be revealed. So the journey began with Bobby, but it definitely did not end with him. We began to think a lot about what it might look like, even if we spent a few minutes each morning praying about who Jesus would have us go after, who Jesus wanted to minister to, and who would he have us encourage. We're headed to Wellington. There's such a simplicity to what God's called us to do, and sometimes that simplicity is a smile, sometimes it's a hug, sometimes it's holding the door open for someone and meaning it more than, than the action itself. Uh, we just landed in Wellington, first stop on the tour, and I think everybody's a little beat, excited to see the Ember Days. Hello. Hello, we the Ember Days. We the Ember Days. Right away, we go out to the curb, we're waiting, and it just kind of dawns on me that it's gonna be a while before our ride gets here. This is, this is when trusting Jesus becomes part of the game, because none of us have phones that work. Yeah, we've gone traveling 25 hours plus. It's, yep. it's kind of like either you're all in or you fold yeah, your cards, because you you're dead tired, so either you're all in or you're not. Yep, we just invite you in this place in Wellington while we got a little time. We just started praying and asked the Lord to show us, and I had gone back inside just looking for people I could pray for inside the terminal. When I came back out, I saw James talking to this lady who was a taxi cab driver. I had no idea what the case was, but I walked up to the lady and saw that James was praying for her knee and found out that ever since she was seven, she had polio. When you said I'm looking for the king, I knew, I knew what that meant. You said I'm the queen, I'm looking for the king. So right now, is it cool if I pray for your knee? Of course, you can pray for me. Is it okay if I touch your knee? Is that gonna bother you? No problem. All right, so Jesus, we know that you, you instruct us to pray that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so her knee was stiff and painful and had a hard time walking. So we pray for her a second time, and we get interrupted because she has to move her taxi up the line. And she gets out, she starts talking about how, 
you know, yeah, it really like feels so different. And at first we don't, we're not really catching on that she's about to tell us she's gotten healed. I believe I have to move because it's a part of my job. But there's no one can break up the Holy Spirit if there's a Holy Spirit moving. I can feel really completely changed. Wow. When I got out of my car, I got to pay my money here. There's no pain now. No pain now? No pain. No pain. Oh, yeah. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> And once again, it was a reminder that God's timing is His timing. We prayed, believing that it would be done, which is what we're taught to do, and the rest is in God's hands. Almost immediately, this Indian man walked over, who was another taxi driver. We all get to start praying for his neck. Just like we saw with Bobby, the woman we prayed for instantly came over, put her hand on his shoulder, and just was like praying with us. at the airport, haven't even left the airport yet. 25 hours of travel, no sleep, we're just totally shot and the Lord's just exploding already. I'm just ready to go to bed. I got like all like adrenaline rush and now, now I'm crashing hard. Life's full of spiritual highs and lows. You have a spiritual all time high followed by a spiritual all time low. It felt so overwhelming and exciting to finally see Jason and Joel when they pulled up. Graham, Ascend the Hill and the Ember Days had been out on this tour a week before we arrived. Graham was there as a speaker, Ascend the Hill and the Ember Days were there leading people into God's presence. Every night's been different and every, every night I get up to, to talk it's been different. So it's just like what that city needs to hear. Everything from healing to Deliverance. Deliverance wow. to some, you know, just losing some spiritual baggage. The first thing we did as they picked us up was to go out to visit the top of a mountain right outside of Wellington. We had such an expectation looking down from that mountaintop onto the city of Wellington. And even though at the time we didn't have any idea of what God was going to do, we knew that he had big plans in store for us. Our first show is at the Salvation Army in Lower Hutt, which is a suburb of Wellington. At this point, we've been traveling 30 some hours and we walk into this venue and the Ember Days and Ascend the Hill are just so passionately leading people into God's presence that we're caught up in a place of worship and it just felt so refreshing and so encouraging to our hearts. It was an intense time of connecting between the tour itself, those of us being out there, and the kids that we were ministering to. All kinds of people coming up saying, we deal with issues of fear and we just want to get over them. And man, I just want my passion for Jesus renewed. I just want to know God all over again. For the glory of God the Father, Jesus his Son, through the power of our Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray these. As we were leaving Wellington to our next show, we traveled through these mountains. And as we were driving through them, it just felt so surreal. Here we were, we traveled all the way across the world in an effort to help people encounter the love of God. As we arrived to the small town of Masterton, we, we pulled up to a church that serves both as a rehabilitation center and a free range chicken farm. And we didn't know what we'd find because Jace had told us, hey, this is like a last minute show. It's really just an opportunity for us as the tour to serve. It was a great reminder to all of us that our calling is to serve no matter where we go, no matter how large the show, no matter how great the opportunity or how small. Playing a little bitty church in Massadown. It's a real, real small town. 
enjoying the uh, rural landscapes and um, yeah man just heaps of New Zealand country bumpkins coming up for a worship it's gonna be good the other dates have um, lots of the other dates have been really um, powerful and huge I don't know what this is going to be this is like Jason's family this house. is pretty much worshiping with my family Since the show did turn out to be one of the smaller ones on the tour, we decided to start it out by just sitting together in a circle, sharing our stories and just communicating our hearts. It felt sort of awkward and forced at first, but the Lord had this incredible way of just turning it around. When Ascend the Hill was closing out the night with How Great Thou Art, this elderly man in the back of the room just started singing out the verses in between the chorus of that song. I just looked over at Joel at one point and tears are just coming down. And it was so surreal because here we are all the way on the other side of the world in a little farming community and we both know the same song. My joy shall fill my heart, that middle bound, and humble and that proclaim my God has great joy. Let me sing my soul, my Savior God. It's encouraging for me to have my faith built up by a group of people who I've never met halfway across the world, and that, that's all I can say. Like there was there was a faith level in the room that I haven't seen yet or experienced yet. It's family. And I think that's something that the Lord would love to teach the church, is how to be family wherever they're at. Look, looking around and I thought, you know, this is, this is what eternity will look like. You know, standing together and praising God and, you know, it's getting, getting an in inkling of that, that feeling. At the end of the night, for us to close, all holding hands, all just having cried out to God, just having seen God work again, it's, it's amazing. We came back over those mountains into Wellington with a couple of days off awaiting us. And we found ourselves on one of those days off at the skate park. One of the people we came across in Wellington was James. James was a skater with an injured Achilles tendon. We prayed for him and then we watched as God instantly healed his ankle, removing all his pain, and then later on, healed his heart. What, are any, do any of you guys got stuff like physical in your bodies that's hurting or messing with you? Yeah. What's going on? My Achilles is a bit From skating. skating? God, we just say uh, thank you for this uh, for this tendon, God. Thank you that you made it. Thank you, God, for James. And we just bless him in Jesus' name. All pain be gone and foot operate and work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, dude, I want you to do this. Just, just like come over here and just put a little weight, like just put a little weight on it, test it out, like move it back and forth. I want you to tell me what you're feeling. Holy <laughs> What the f what the f There's actually no pain in there. It actually feels fine now. It's scary, bro. Do you know Jesus, man? You want to know Jesus? Yeah. You want to? Wow. So I just want to we'll let you know, man, that the decision is, it's the biggest decision you could ever make in your life. God loves you so much. Um, God, we just want to thank you so much for James. And um, you can just repeat this after me, bro. You can just say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me a fresh start. Thank you for giving me a fresh start. Help me to be the follower of Jesus. Help me to be the follower of Jesus. That will change the world. That will change the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, you're a, you're a fresh man.
After we experienced what the Lord had done with James, we decided to spend most of our afternoon at the skate park. The whole time was so surreal. Time and time again, we saw these kids healed. Five of those kids gave their lives to Jesus that day. One of the sweetest stories for me was this boy, he was 13, I think his name was Connor. He was wearing the same red flannel that I have. And he said, well, do you think Jesus can heal my ear? And he said, well, I got my ear pierced, and ever since I got it pierced, it's been hurting. I'm like, well, Connor, come on, man. You put a needle through your ear and caused yourself pain. So I don't really know if we should be praying about that. And right then I felt as though the Lord was speaking to me, don't be a fool, pray for his ear. It was such a small little thing, but for Connor, it was huge. All it took was that, a little tiny thing that we would most of us go, come on, man, that's, that's silly. And Connor gave his life to Jesus that day. And then there was another James later on that, that evening that we saw, and he had blonde, curly hair, and we got to pray for him. And I just remember, I saw him the next morning. He tells us two things. You made me feel like it was my birthday, and you made me feel like I was the most special person on the planet. I just got to tell him all about Jesus, all about the Lord, got to pray with him, got to encourage him, and it just turned out to be this incredible moment. In my opinion, the best day we've ever had out on the streets in terms of the fruit that was coming out. touring for over two years in the States and we're still just a drop in the bucket as far as bands and ministries are concerned. But you come to New Zealand and as a band, if you take the time to, to actually tour the entire country and go to the places that other bands wouldn't. I mean, most people fly in and play Auckland and Wellington, maybe Christchurch and fly out. But, you know, taking the opportunity to go from city to city, big or small, church to church, big or small, um, you legitimately have an opportunity to saturate a country and a nation for the gospel of Jesus. In the small towns, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal and um, so many kids come out and so many kids come really excited and expectant and so, I don't know, you can make a big difference in a short amount of time, you know. So we head over to Parachute, and Parachute's sort of the grand finale of our experience. And it's this big festival, 25, 30,000 kids coming from all over New Zealand. In a way, Parachute Festival summarized everything that God had prepared us for up until that point. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. That's God's heart for every one of you here for every one of us up here and for everybody outside of this room, everybody outside of this, this place that we're at called Parachute. And I know that God has a lot in store for each and every person here in this room. We do not believe it's a mistake that we are here all the way from the United States. I believe that God has brought each and every one of you to this room tonight for a specific purpose and we're just getting started. Yeah. Oh my 
change him. Lord, I, I don't, we're called not to walk by, by, by sight. Lord, we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. Blessings and blessings upon Emma. In Jesus' name, God, great things to come for her life. Yeah. Lord, continue the work that you've started in her. Yeah. Continue increasing her passion for you, Jesus. Continue her desire. Lead many to the Lord. Yeah. Fill them up, God. Fill them up, God. Set him free. Set him free completely. The Lord says you are worthy. There's such a feeling of a kindred spirit throughout the festival, the organization, the bands that were there, and why we were there. Tons of different friends have just come up to me, just really blown away by the Prince of God. Not by the bands, not by like the way we play, by the presence of God. It's been the best parachute for me, basically because it's dreams coming true for me. Like I had a vision to see what Kamalov is doing and the Ember Days and Ascend the Hill are doing in New Zealand since I was 19. And this is the first time I've ever seen it in New Zealand like this. And it's literally a dream come true for me. We were playing on the main stage today and it was like, you could see like this kind of sea of people, you know, and everyone's kind of like hands lifted and worshiping. And I'm just kind of like in awe of all that God's doing in that moment in the first place. There's so much depth and like intimacy that God wants to have with people and whatever, however it's expressed, whether it's hands raised, hearts raised, singing as loud as you can, worshiping as hard as you can, or just sitting there silently soaking it in or whatever, like, man, to see God moving in the hearts of people is just such a testament to his faithfulness, not of, you know, the excitement of a band or the quality of a band, but the power of the presence of God and to experience that on the other side of the world is amazing. <laughs> The way that they've got it, God is anointing you guys to come and live is, is quite incredible and um, I feel like something's been passed on to us in New Zealand and um, the, heart, the heart that you guys have for, for people. We had so many opportunities throughout this event that I walked away going, God, only you could have opened the doors as wide as you did at Parachute. It was that kind of a feeling. One of the things we thought of in New Zealand was how many people we pass up every day that God may want us, may have planted us right there, right then, to inspire them, to encourage them, to lead them to Jesus, to speak into their lives, and yet how easy it is to just walk by. So many times we're looking for this incredible missions experience. What if we as Christians just paid a little more attention to the people in our lives. God chose us, meaning all of us, not just come and live, not just these artists, but every single one of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus. He chose us to change the world. Looking back on where this trip started in LAX with a 76-year-old veteran named Bobby, God had shown us just how important the individual heart was to him. That theme was recurring throughout this entire trip. It was all about the individual. It was all about the, the single encounters, those, those individual opportunities to pour into people. And that's what made this trip so special. One person at a time, being able to hear their stories, being able to understand where they're coming from. Come and live is not special. Our bands are not special. As individuals, we're not any different, more unique, more qualified or gifted than anyone else. Ask the Lord to give you encounters. Ask Him to allow you to engage people the way He did. Invite Jesus to give you everything you need to be who He is, because He's already paid the price. He's already given His life so that we would walk in abundance, so that we would walk with power, so that we would walk with authority, but beyond all of that, that we would walk with compassion. We were taught to love God and to love our neighbors. 
would you reinstill in us the heart of Jesus, the heartbeat of Jesus Christ and God, the, the wind of the Spirit, the breath of the Holy Spirit to just change us and to compel us to keep going forward, to continue touching lives, to continue ministering to people no matter where they're at or what they're doing or who they are or what they look like, that we would go, that we would be obedient to make disciples. So God, give us an opportunity today Give me an opportunity today to change the world, even in one person's world. That would be enough. So bring one person into my path today and every day of my life that I can encourage, however you allow me, and I will be satisfied with that. And you grow us and you teach us and you mold us and shape us as you desire. So Jesus, be glorified in our lives and make so much more out of us than what we could ever make of ourselves. Yourself? Um, a little sad that I'm leaving New Zealand. Oh, well, you can always oh, no. stay with you. Oh, that's yeah. true. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah.
and stop some traffic. Maybe someone can help me, what do you say? I'll do it, I. You're not speaking into the mic, you oh. bearded beast. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, talking to the mic. Hey, hey, check. Hey, check. check. Test check. the mic. Line. Test the line. Check. Test the line. Check. <laughs> I'm driving around in a van that clearly has no defroster. On the wrong side of the road. On the wrong side of the road, and it's leaking oh, yeah. all over your stuff. This is Graham Howell reporting live from with, Hamilton with the guy. Parachute 2011 with JamesWallen.com. JamesWallen.com. Wallen.com. <laughs> We're here with the guy. The guy. Hey guys. What's your name? Guy. <laughs> this guy's name is Guy. <laughs> He's Let's see the license. Dude, freaking guy. Freaking guy. Uh, 